Hey everybody, so I'm back from a hiatus on my video blog. Uh, we're going to talk today a little bit about uh, various rinses that you can use uh, in your nose and your sinuses. Um, so the simplest one of these that, that's used by most people is just a simple saline rinse. So saline is just salt water. Um, and this is used by lots and lots of people. You can buy neti pots and Neomed rinses at the drugstore. Um, and for most everyone with sinus and allergy problems, um, just rinsing your nose out with saline can be really helpful. You know, it opens your nose up, it flushes out whatever things you're allergic to, um, and it just makes you feel better. Um, so we use this frequently uh, for just for allergies and sinus infections, but also for patients after they've had nasal surgery uh, to help kind of flush things out and to heal properly. So um, where it gets a little bit more complicated is adding in different medications to the saline rinse. Um, so uh, in terms of how this has been studied or research, uh, there's not a ton of good research evidence for any of this. Um, the one thing where there's the most uh, evidence is actually to add steroid to the saline rinse. Um, and this can be done in a, a various different ways. Sometimes we use a kind of a little uh, asthma capsule called budesonide respules, and we have patients mix that with their saline rinse and use it. Um, other times we use a compounding pharmacy to actually compound the steroid into the saline rinse. Um, and then patients will rinse their nose just like they would with a neti pot or a Neomed. Um, it's just the, the, the rinse has some steroid medication in it. Um, so this has been shown to be very useful, um, especially for patients with nasal polyps. Uh, particularly after they've had surgery. Um, and it's been helpful uh, to help control uh, the regrowth of the polyps after surgery. So it kind of helps to keep patients out of trouble and out of needing further surgery, um, preferable to just using plain saline with no medication in it. Um, that I think is probably the most common use for steroid rinses in the nose. But I think for anybody with sort of chronic sinusitis and chronic problems, um, it can be very helpful at kind of keeping that under control, particularly after surgery. Uh, now where things get a little more controversial is adding antibiotics or antifungal medications to a sinus rinse. Um, overall, there's really not a lot of great evidence to support doing this, um, but some, it's something that I feel like we use sometimes as almost like a last ditch effort for patients. Um, in my practice, I don't do this much. Um, I find the, the time when I would contemplate doing it would be a patient who has a long history of sinus infections and problems um, and has had previous uh, traditional sinus surgery. So they have you know, big openings into their sinuses, um, but they're continuing to have problems. You know, Pressure, green drainage, there's still pus in the nose. Um, so typically in that case, if we put a swab in there and culture that, see what kind of organism is growing and causing the problem. Um, I would consider actually adding an antibiotic to their sinus rinse that would attack or, you know, kill off that organism in their nose. Um, and this could be different things, you know, E. coli, staph, um, pseudomonas, uh, you know, strep, all sorts of different bacteria. Um, so in that circumstance, I do think potentially an antibiotic or an antifungal rinse uh, might be appropriate. Um, it can be helpful in certain select patients. Anyway, uh, those are kind of the main things that we, we use for sinus rinses. Um, again, most of the time, I'd say 90% or more, it's just going to be plain saltwater rinses. Uh, but sometimes we do uh, add a little bit of extra to that as well. So I hope that's uh, helpful and interesting. And uh, we'll talk to you in the next one of these.